Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 25 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. From this came up the concept of sex-linked inheritance. So sex-linked inheritance means a genetic trait which is linked to the X chromosome. And X chromosome is a part of the sex chromosome. That is why they are called sex-linked inheritance. Now we have to see how does it make a difference if a particular gene is linked to the X chromosome, how does it make a difference to the pattern of inheritance. Now when it, the gene gets passed on to the next generation, how much difference does it make if it is associated only with the X chromosome with no allele being present on the Y chromosome. It actually makes a big difference and that is why we read it or we have a separate group called sex linked inheritance. So let us understand sex-linked inheritance. So this was discovered by Morgan in 1910 while he was doing these experiments with the red-eyed and the white-eyed drosophila, the experiments which we saw just now in the previous experiments. So that is how he discovered sex-linked inheritance. He could find that there are certain inherited traits uh, for which the corresponding genes are present exclusively on the X chromosomes. And since they are present on the X chromosome, therefore in case of males, they do not have their counterpart on the Y chromosome. So genes located on X chromosomes for which there is no corresponding allele on the Y chromosome. And this makes a huge difference in the way these traits get inherited. So we will just now have a look at how these traits get inherited. So in order to understand the sex-linked inheritance better, let us look at Morgan's first experiment. So what did Morgan do in his first experiment? In the parental generation, he took the red-eyed female and crossed them with the white-eyed male drosophila. So female, red-eyed, so they are going to be XX. So one X can have W+, plus, the other X also has W+, plus because he took the homozygous red-eyed female. So this is how the homozygous red-eyed uh, red female will be. This was crossed with the male which was white eye. So the white eye color will be present on the X chromosome and there will be no corresponding gene present on the Y chromosome, right? So now, in order to get the F1 generation, what are the gametes that can be produced by the female? So the only gamete that the female can produce is X W plus. So W plus is the only gamete that it can produce because both the uh, maternal and the paternal chromosome has got the same uh, same gene, right? Or the same allele, you can say. But in this case, this can produce two types of gametes. One is the X with the white eye color, and the other one is the Y with no trait for the eye color. Correct. So now, what are the possibilities that can be produced in the first generation? That is the F1 generation. So if you look at the F1 generation, what do you get in the F1 generation? So one possibility is this X can combine with this X. The other possibility is this X can combine with the Y. So one possibility is you can get a female which is red-eyed. The other option is you can get a male which is again red-eyed, right? So in the F1 generation, you see that all are red-eyed. So that is what happened in Morgan's experiment. So F1 generation was all red-eyed and that is why Morgan thought that, okay, the dominant trait is getting displayed. So it is as per Mendel's rules of inheritance. So here if you see, the father does not pass the trait to the son. So father had white eye, but the father did not pass that trait to the son. Why? Because the father can contribute either X or Y. Now if a boy is being born, that means the Y is being donated by the father because the boy will have a Y. So this Y is being donated by the father. So Y does not carry the uh, eye color gene. Therefore the father could not pass the eye color gene to the son. Correct? So this is what happened in the F1 generation. So now, now let us suppose if the F1 female which is being produced, so this is a female which is red-eyed. So let us suppose if we try to cross this female with a white-eyed male. So what are we actually doing? We are taking this female which is red-eyed but heterozygous red-eyed. And if we are trying to cross it with a white-eyed male, so white-eyed male will be something like this. 
So what are the possible gametes that can be produced from here? It is this and this. These are the possible gametes here. And what are the possible gametes from here? This and this. So what are the possible options that you can get in order to produce the offsprings? Now this can combine with this, this can combine with this, this can combine with this and this can combine with this. So the all possible offsprings that can be produced are XW plus XW again XW plus Y XW, XW and XW, Y. So what do you see? 50% of the offsprings are female and 50% are male. Wherever you have XX, they are female and wherever you have XY, they are male. So 50% of them are male and 50% are female. Even in that, if you see, this is red-eyed because it has W+. plus. This is also red-eyed. But if you look at it, this is a female which is white-eyed and that is what was observed in the next generation. You remember? They are also, I, I was telling right, that in the next generation he found that even when he performed this cross, so this was Morgan's second experiment. So he, he, this was his, uh, the part two of the experiment where he found that white-eyed females are also being produced. So the this white eye color is not limited to a particular sex. It is not only limited to the male sex. It can be present in females also. And here if you see, it is present in males also. So it is present in both males as well as female. So one interesting thing that you can note here is that, so if you look at it, basically this was, let us say this was the mother. So understand it this way. This was the mother. Right? This was the father. Correct? So the father had white eye and the mother had red eye. Now when they gave birth to their kids, now all the kids, the possibility of having a daughter and the possibility of having a son was like 50%, 50% each. But both the son or the daughter, they are all red eyed. So the father did not pass on this trait to his son. Right? But when this daughter, so this was the daughter, so this same daughter, when the daughter got married to another person who was white-eyed, right? What was observed? It was observed that the kids, which were the possibility of having kids with white eye color was 50% because 50% of the kids are red-eyed. So these two are red-eyed and 50% of the kids are white-eyed, right? So here we could see that there are certain traits which you might not pass on to your immediate generation. That means if the father did not pass on this trait to his kids, but the same trait was observed in his grandson. And why was this trait observed in the grandson? That was because the daughter was actually having that W. Right? Since the daughter was having this W, that is why this was being passed on to the son. So it, in this type of sex-linked inheritance, it is being observed that the mother passes on the trait to the son and the father can pass on the trait to the daughter. So if you see here, this W which the father was carrying, he could pass this on to the daughter. But the daughter was still red-eyed because it got red-eyed from, from her mother. That is why it was still red-eyed. But again in the next experiment if you see that when this daughter became a mother, she was able to pass on this white eye color to her son. Right? And that is why the son became white eyed. Correct? So the mother is able to pass on the trait to the son. And a father directly cannot pass it on to the son because the father passes on only the Y chromosome to the son. And the Y chromosome doesn't carry the trait for eye color. Correct? However, the father can pass on the trait to the daughter. So here in this case, if you see, the father had XW, the mother also had XW and both of them contributed that and made this daughter as Y type. So basically in sex linked inheritance, it has been observed that a father passes on the trait to the daughter and the mother passes on to the trait to the son. And that is why this type of inheritance is also known as crisscross inheritance because you see, Cross, cross, father to daughter and mother to son. So that is why this process of transmission of gene from mother to son or from father to daughter is sex is also known as crisscross inheritance. 
So this is actually popularly known as crisscross inheritance and it is very common. So just because of the fact that in case of males, they have only one pair of homologous chromosomes which are not identical to each other and they are the sex chromosomes. So that is the only difference here. Now since X and Y chromosomes are not identical, therefore both of them do not carry the same sequence of genes. So as a result, whenever uh, sexual reproduction happens between a male and a female, what happens is a female will always give an X chromosome, but a male can give an X or it can give a Y. So now if a son is being born, that means the male is contributing Y, correct? So let us suppose if this is the mother and if this is the father, right? So the father can contribute either X or Y, but the mother always will contribute X. Now if the father is contributing a X, in that case what will happen? XX will be formed, that is a daughter will be formed. Now, this kind of genes which are present only on the X groups, I mean only on the X chromosomes. So, the father can pass on that trait to the daughter, right? But if the father is giving Y chromosome, then XY will be formed, that is a son will be born. So, the father is contributing the Y chromosome and this type of gene is not at all present on the Y chromosome. So, father cannot directly pass on that trait to the son. So, whatever trait the son will have, it will have because of the X chromosome because here also in son also the Y is not going to carry the gene, right? So it, 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 the eye color of the son will depend on the gene which is present in the X chromosome and who decides the X chromosome? The mother. So the trait of the son is decided by the mother and the father can pass on the trait to the daughter but he cannot directly pass, on, pass it on to the son. However, it can be seen in the grandson that, that, that is also because when a grandson is being born, there again the son or the daughter, I mean if a grandson to this man is being born, so that will happen either when this daughter gets married or when this son gets married. So there again you get different possibilities, right? The, if the daughter is carrying that particular trait and then only she can give birth to, some, to a son who might have that trait. So again that depends to whom, whom she gets married. So this is how the crisscross inheritance works. So this was one of the important contributions of Morgan because he was the first one to uh, describe the sex linked inheritance. Before this, nobody knew that uh, inheritance could be linked to the sex chromosomes as well. So he studied this pattern of inheritance. Thank you. Please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.